Hello, I am Ahmad Mustafa, a DevOps engineer. Today, I will show you how to build a scalable Jenkins server on a Kubernetes cluster. Our agenda is short. We will start with an introduction to the CRCD pipelines, and then define the problem we need to solve. And finally, we will show the solution architecture and a demo for it. We know that continuous integration and delivery of software artifacts have a huge impact on the velocity of rolling out new features to users. So building an efficient pipeline and its infrastructure is inevitably important. The figure shows a simple pipeline that can be implemented using any automation tool like Jenkins, as we will see in the following slides. This basic pipeline has important stages for any pipeline. These stages are built, test, and deployed. Assume that you are a member of a huge organization with hundreds or thousands of projects built and tested continuously. You may need to consider investing in an infrastructure that accommodates this workload. The problems you may face while using a single node automation server are increasing the downtime, long build queues, dependency held due to different requirements for various projects. We are proposing a solution using Jenkins, Kubernetes, and Docker. This solution is implemented by operating a Jenkins controller that provisions a new customized spot for each build job. This customization is done using Docker images and containers. The advantages of this system is the increase in the developer's velocity, writing, building, and testing their code, customizing the agent bot used to use different tools based on Docker images, decreasing the downtime of Jenkins, separating the Jenkins infrastructure administration from actual pipelines. This advantage is the need for human resources to maintain this infrastructure, also the increase in the cost of the cloud providers. This now the system architecture and the design. The system architecture and the design, as we see, it consists of Kubernetes cluster. This cluster has two uh, or three uh, namespaces. Each namespace contains a pod. Uh, we, we see here the Jenkins controller. This is the main controller for the for the Jenkins server. Uh, it uses KTS API server in order to provision uh, other pod KTS pods. Uh, each pod works as a Jenkins agent. Uh, these pods are scaling out and in. If you need more pods, it will scale more. If you need less pods, it will scale on uh, to zero. We also have Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring. Uh, Prometheus pulls the uh, metrics from Jenkins controller, and Grafana uses these metrics from Prometheus in order to visualize the different jobs uh, status, also the uh, Kubernetes status. We use uh, GitHub webhook in order to push events and uh, comment events. Uh, are automatically triggering the Jenkins controller and uh, provision a new board for each of these events. This now is the system architecture and the design for AWS. AWS uh, design is very simple. It's not uh, intended to do this in production. In production, we have more security layers, but let's now see the basic implementation. The basic implementation uh, uses uh, two availability zones in a VPC inside a region. At these two availability zones, each availability zone has two subnets, one public and the other is private. The private subnets uh, are the worker node subnets, which use, uh, uses auto scaling group in order to scale these nodes according to the load. Other components like Net Gateway, Route Table, and Internet Gateways are very basic networking components that are used, in or, uh, that are used to provide the accessibility outside and inside the cluster. Let's now see the thing using Terraform files. Uh, these Terraform files uh, define different different components for AWS, like routes, uh, like the auto scaling uh, roles, like the case. Uh, this uh, the code is inside the uh, blog. Let's see the Jenkins value file. We use Helm deploy in order to deploy this Jenkins value. Uh, we have here the plugins that we need to install. Also. As a number of executors, the container environments, as a service type, and different tools. We have here a very important uh, C job. This C job here, this C job here, uh, uses organization folder, which is an job DSL plugin uh, description, uh, in order to provide a first job to uh, to to the queue in the Jenkins. Uh, this job will will be built automatically on the first Jenkins uh, the first Jenkins deployment, uh, which access to the GitHub repo 
and get all the branches based on some uh, based on some uh, filters like we have here we include all cytic filter as uh, to be applied to the github organization uh, this code is based on uh, GCAC uh, Jenkins configuration as code the plugin uh, injecting it inside the hidden values file so let's now see the uh, demo just we need to write here for apply and uh, before Terraform apply we need to uh, init the Terraform let's delete this the last demo then here I fall then. we also need to note that here four variables we have the Jenkins admin password and username admin admin also the github username and password the github username is my uh, organization ID and the github password is a personal token this personal token uh, can be can be generated from settings new organization uh, then go to developer settings the personal access tokens and you can generate this token from it we also have have the aws uh, access key secret key and aws ssd pocket uh, this SSD bucket works as an inventory manager uh, that uh, manages the artifacts, archiving the artifacts, and uploading it to the SSD. Also, uh, this secret key and uh, access key uh, is very simple. We can uh, can get rid of it using Terraform files and add some roles. But let's let's take now to the access key and secret key. Other variables that are configurable, but I is I'm sticking to the default values that uh, I have typed in the variable file, like public subnet cider, uh, cluster name, cluster version, worker node. Uh, all these things have default values, but I'm sticking to them. You can they are they are configurable by putting them here. Would like to note also the Prometheus values. Uh, it also uses them. To deploy Prometheus, uh, Grafana values. Uh, Grafana has a default dashboard. This dashboard, uh, you know, this dashboard for Jenkins performance dashboard and governance cluster dashboard. And they are loaded with their Grafana during the installation. Uh, also, we have data sources. These data sources are from the Prometheus server. So they are, they, all these are the basic files. Uh, they are not intended to be uh, produced uh, in production. Uh, we have to add more security layers like access token in the Kafana, access token in Prometheus, access token in Jenkins. All these things are needed in the production level. Here is the Helm release. Helm release we have uh, to add the uh, Jenkins admin name, the control admin password, and control admin password. Uh, this control at the user is the engineering Jenkins value, so we are setting this this value admin user and admin password. Uh, also, would like to note here in the selector we have two, uh, two different types of nodes we have uh, on demand and spot nodes. The on demand nodes are used in the Jenkins controller, we select the node using the uh, labels. And the spot nodes are used for the agent controller, like here. Uh, this approach is done to uh, decrease the cost. Here we have initialized the Terraform. Then we run here for add time.
Now we have a plan Z infrastructure creation. Uh, let's now apply this plan by writing data for apply for the proof. This auto approve is not intended to do in production. You have to apply and see the, the next plan uh, and approve it by typing this. But we will uh, write the proof in order to uh, as shortcut. So this is a shortcut. It will take too much time, around 10 to 15 minutes uh, for applying this infrastructure. Now, after the infrastructure has been created, the completion of the application of this telecom files is OK. Let's now update the config, the key config for the cluster project to access it from the console by using this command. Uh, the config has been applied successfully. Let's try to steal it. Oops. Uh, we have Gravana bot and different Unicef bot, but also uh, Jenkins bot. Let's try to do CTL. Get SVC services. And we have the external IP for Gravana and Jenkins. Let's so start by Gravana. Grafana is import 80, so we are loading with the admin admin, uh, the default username and password. It's now loading. Uh, also, we'd like to know that Jenkins takes time to load after the completion of the, uh, of the infrastructure application. Uh, so we need to try to start Jenkins import 80, I think. Yeah, port 80. It's now okay. Uh, let's log in to the front first using admin and the password is admin. Okay, and then skip the, uh, the changing password. Uh, manage the dashboards. And then we have two dashboards that are defined in the Grafana uh, web files uh, Jenkins performance and then over the window also covered this cluster, this this cluster. We have different uh, cluster uh, related uh, metrics like deployments, number of nodes, etc. And when we are uh, going to uh, add jobs to the Jenkins, uh, we will see the different, also different metrics to the usage, memory usage, etc. Uh, now let's talk into the Jenkins by using admin app. To open the dashboard, as we see, we have the seed shop uh, organization in Kahman. If we have uh, started the organization now, we scan the organization and check the scan organization log. It will access to the GitHub using the personal tokens that we have defined earlier and bypass all the uh, branches, all the uh, repos that uh, does not have the uh, filter that we have added, the filter, site store. Uh, any repo that does not start with Cytic, it will not be added to the uh, scan. Cytic star, include Cytic star. Uh, it also includes only Cytic demo projects. Why? Because this demo project contains a Jenkins file, which is a declarative pipeline. So, uh, this, uh, if we check the project now, Cytic demo project, uh, it has four branches artifact in this, this two. Uh, Let's check this pipeline in the GitHub repo. It's not this repo. Inside it, the demo project here. This. Okay. Uh, this Jenkins file is in the main branch. 
uh, we have uh, YAML file to describe the code we need to uh, we need to define uh, using CMAG. This 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 image is exclusively done by me, so that this image is customizable for this pipeline. If you want to use any other image, we can we can uh, we can we could add it uh, at it here. Also, we have uh, this pipeline uh, do all its work inside this container. Uh, let's check this pipeline by starting it. And then start the uh, new pipeline. Check the console. It now creating support with this name. Uh, if we go to the Gibbs Telegram get bot, we will find the name bot in the status container creating. Uh, Let's describe this bot and see what is the Docker image uh, that it uses. Let's use this CMake unit test as we have to find uh, in the Jenkins file here. So, it created the bot, checking out the uh, GitHub repo and the starting starting the stages different stages of the stage and the test stage start the second stage uh, this demo project is not intended for production also and then start the testing stage and all so all of them have have been successfully fetched. Um, this job has been paused. What about if we need to add uh, our code for the comment and push events? We will take this URL and go to the settings of force project in the our box. Edit or pop. And then edit this URL. And update our code. As in, if we need to, to add a comment, for example, uh, let's edit this file tt.md and see what's going on. This is not present. Comment, uh, the comment name, new test for GitHub. Comments are changes. The changes have been committed. Let's then check the main branch here. Then, uh, once it got the post event test, start the, uh, the build the job. Just continuously, we see the console output and creating another bot. We would like to know that it had the provision the first bot. So the first bot had been the provision, as we see. So this is the second bot, main two, same ID as here. And also finish successfully. So this is a very basic uh, explanation for the pipeline. We can add more and more advanced settings based on the project uh, requirements. Let's now see the Grafana. Let's refresh. Uh, it now got the, some data about the jobs. Uh, we would like to know that for each 120 seconds, it started to pull the metrics. Prometheus pulled the metrics from Jenkins. So these values are not instantaneously updated. I have to uh, wait for 120 seconds. Uh, so this is uh, a very basic demo. 
and I hope you have enjoyed the video and enjoyed the demo. You will find all the code in the uh, blog uh, articles that I'm reading right now. Uh, and also before going on, we uh, we need to destroy the infrastructure in order to uh, cure more costs. So by using Tira for destroy and also auto approve. Okay. Thank you for watching time. Uh, I hope you got benefits from this architecture and this design. If you need anything, please let me know. And link it in uh, by sending a message to me, and I am ready to respond and, uh, to you for your for your questions. Bye.